Gus, no Ezra Mam, and no Payne Haas. Both suspended for hip chops in that match against the Eels in Darwin. Yeah. My mum's 90 years of age. She's been following rugby league a whole lot. A whole lot she's been following rugby league. And the other night she said to me, what's a hip drop, no? What's a hip drop? I think we're all a bit confused. What's, what's, what are they talking about? What's don't a hip drop? Me, mum. Don't start me, mum. I said, don't start me, mum. <laughs> like, six months ago, you know, Arthur and Beryl are sitting at home in Wellington in their three-bedroom brick in their home watching rugby league all their life. They said, what's this hip drop? Where did this hip drop come from? <laughs> it's been something created by the NRL itself. And you're not going to solve it by... By, by treating the symptoms, you've got to solve the problem. And the problem is a culmination of 25 years of chasing your tail around ruck speed and tackle techniques and wrestle techniques and refereeing and overzealous HIA. Everything has contributed to this and they're not addressing the problem. It's all right for the NRL to say they're going to stamp it out. You caused it. You caused it. All right? Treat the problem, not the symptom. Michael, there's confusion from fans watching at home, but there also seems to be confusion at NRL HQ as well. Yeah, well, I spoke, look, I wrote a story today in the Sydney Morning Herald about the ARL Commission raising concerns around this crackdown that we're seeing at the moment. And it, look, it's, it's not a good sign for NRL management when the ARL Commission, with a board meeting scheduled this Wednesday, want to please explain as to what is going on on the field. The, this is not a directive from the Commission. This isn't like Magic Round a few years ago where they said we want to police this and police this hard and make sure we just stamp it out of the game. This just has come out of nowhere and they want answers as to why all of a sudden players are spending time off the field for incidents that people here don't understand. There are some where you can say, OK, under the definition of a hip drop, which the NRL has tried to push out, we can understand. But you just sit there and you're mind-boggled by some of these decisions that not only players are penalised for, are then going to the bin and not even charged by the match review committee. So... The NRL is going to have to answer to that on Wednesday and, and, and come up with a, a roadmap out of this because I don't know what they do now. They've set a precedent. Well, that, How do they get out of it? That's a problem for them. How do they get out of it? The, the NRL very rarely, if ever, go back on something. You see the, the punch rule. They're never going to go back on the punch rule. They're, they're now suspending guys, sending guys off for 10 minutes for things that we just think are part and parcel of the game. How could they possibly then go back on it? That's, that's my question. How, where do they go with it? But is, isn't the frustration the fact that such... Over, overzealous policing of it. Not, not only is it just placed on report penalty, move on. You're costing teams games by sending players to the bin, multiple players, and then you decide not to send others to the bin, like Payne Haas and... He's not even under current, He's under not even current tackling techniques, under current HIA laws and current laws and ruck speed laws and the way the game is officiated, they can't back away from this. They've created this. They have created this issue. Now, if it was so easy not to do... And we've had weeks and weeks now of blokes getting sin binned and blokes getting suspended and some blokes being sent from the field, all right? If it was so easy not to do, why are we seeing more and more and more of it? Why is it the players can't stop from doing it or it can't stop from happening? What's going on in the tackle? There needs to be an absolute summit with some of the best coaches and some of the best minds in rugby league sitting in a room to work out how we got here. How did we get to this point where this is now more prevalent, all right? And it's, it's all a combination of tackle techniques, ruck speed, officiating, HIA, because players are now scared to get in front of people and, and tackle from the front because they know they could easily get knocked out. You're going to be sent to the head bin straight away. There is a hot, And the players are so big and strong, their legs keep pumping. How do you want them to tackle it? Stop penalising what you don't like and tell us how do you think these blokes should be tackled. And you're going to have to back off on a lot of stuff if you want a solution and you want to keep this game going. You can't just eliminate this because the players aren't doing it on purpose. They don't do this at training. No, no way. They don't tackle like that at training. They don't They're practice it. It doesn't that. happen at I training. Agree with that. I agree. You agree with that? 100% agree. So, why is it happening in the game? Because of all the other rubbish that they've had to contend with, they are making the game way too hard to play. They're making it so hard to tackle these big, strong players. All right? Now, the way to do it is let them half push through the line and get them from behind. But if their legs are pumping and they're still pulling through, how do you get them down? They're so strong. You know, you can't. And, and you can't, and you can't low tackling has been taken out of the game. Anymore, yeah, I'll, right. I'll sit there and talk about the science of tackling and the history of the tackle over the last 30 years. What referees have done, what Super League did to our game, what media has done to our game in all of this, making it almost impossible to coach and play. And this, this is a symptom. This is not a problem. This is a symptom of a greater problem that the game refuses to address. They all think they're the expert on it. They're not. 
The NRL is not the expert on this. And whoever it was on the Commission that has called for a, uh, an explanation, I applaud you. Thank you. Gussie, you sat here two years ago with the Magic Round crackdown and, and you, you warned of the consequences 100%. of doing this. Is this a spin-off effect 100%. partly because of that? 100%. It is all relatable. 100%. 100%. I've seen it in the defences now. Because they are so oversensitive with the HIA and we've got old mate in the bunker there, as soon as you get a slap in the face, they want to send you off for 15 minutes and you might be out for 11 days, they're not going to stick their head in there anymore. They're not going to put their head in front of them. And these blokes are so big and strong that they just run. How do you pull them down from behind? We've seen it for years and years and years. Legs will get caught up under tackles and players will do it. They're not doing it deliberately. It's not what they train. It's not what they're taught to do. It doesn't happen at training. Come out and watch training sessions. I'll bet no one from the NRL has been out to watch training sessions and wrestle sessions. None of this happens at training. Yet it happens in a game. Why? All right? That's what they've got to deal with. They've got to deal with the problem, not the symptom of the problem. All right? They're not going to solve this the way they are. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to tackle anyone. Can you chair the summit? Hey? Can you be chair of the summit? Like I said, I'll do it in my lunch hour. You certainly will. I, I just applaud someone that's finally stood up and said, what the hell are you people doing? What the hell are you doing? Because you are making it so hard for coaches and players to play this game. We are losing our game completely. And you're just sitting back there and thinking you're experts on it. You're not.